never really heard those words, with the dawn of redeeming grace. Isn't that uh, the truth, you know? A little guy coming into the world, that's when grace came. Your duty should be over, sir. Thank you very much. I feel we need to do a da 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 <laughs> Thank you for jumping in there, Don. Well, I'm almost to full strength. I'd say 98%. Still a little puffed. But... Uh, Hopefully, my voice and my strength will hold up because I got an important message for you. Message from the Lord. Because How do I know that? Because it's from His Word. Open your Bibles to 2 Corinthians chapter 4, verses 7 through 13. Oh, excuse me, through 18. As I was contemplating what to talk about this last Sunday of 2020, that sounds pretty good, getting rid of 2020. We'll talk about that a little bit more. But this passage kept coming to my mind because as I said, uh, December's been a, a stinko month at the Ruberg Place. First of the month, I got COVID, and right now my wife has COVID. But don't worry, the CDC and the Indiana State Department of Health said I can uh, be out doing my regular job, so that's why I'm here this morning. First thing I thought when uh, Wednesday morning they told Pam she had COVID, oh man, I'm gonna shut down church again? So I was thankful because church is important. Watching videos is good, but the, when we come together, that's why Jesus said, or the Lord says, don't forsake the, forsake the assembling of yourselves together because we need each other. We need each other physically. And I don't care that we don't have to hug or do any of that stuff, but we need each other, especially during these hard, hard times we're going through. But this passage just kept coming to my mind as uh, the Apostle Paul was reflecting on his life and what was going on in his 2020. And so let's read God's word together. St. Corinthians chapter 4, verses 7 to 18. But we have this treasure in earthen vessels, that the excellency of the power may be of God and not of us. We are hard-pressed on every side, yet not crushed. We are perplexed, but not in despair. Persecuted, but not forsaken. Struck down, but not destroyed. Always carrying about in the body the dying of the Lord Jesus, that the life of Jesus may also be manifested in our body. For we, for we live... Excuse me, for we who, who live are always delivered to death for Jesus' sake, that the life of Jesus may be manifested in our mortal flesh. So then death is working in us, but life in you. And since we have the same spirit of faith according to what is written, I believed and therefore I spoke, we also believe and therefore speak. Knowing that he who raised up the Lord Jesus will also raise up us up with Jesus and will present us with you. For all things are for your, your sale, sakes, that grace, having spread through many, may cause thanksgiving to abound to the glory of God. Therefore we do not lose heart, even though our outward man is perishing, 
yet the inward man is being renewed day by day. For our light affliction, which is but for a moment, is working for us a far more exceeding and eternal weight of glory. While we do not look at the things which are seen, but to the things which are not seen. For the things which are seen are temporary, but the things which are not seen are eternal. What a powerful passage that is for 2020. I've titled the message this morning, 2020, Maybe the Hardest Year Ever. Now, I don't know, I wasn't alive during the Depression. Uh, I don't think anyone in here was alive during the Depression. Uh, some of you, close. But anyway, that's another issue. But, uh, but maybe it was hard, harder then, I don't know. But I do know for a fact that 2020 has been the hardest year I've ever seen. It's been hard to pastor, hard to, to, to quote unquote guide a church through all the rigmarole we've had to go through. Hard personally, hard to see people going through the, the fear and the, the danger of the COVID. It's been a hard year. Contrary to the title of the message, I want this to be an encouraging message. <laughs> I want this to be an encouraging message, encouraging message as we come to the end of 2020. But in order for me to encourage you, let me first discourage you a bit. <laughs> let me remind you of why this has been such a hard year. There's a phrase that uh, Pam and I use often. We use it when our peanut butter falls on the floor, our, our peanut butter toast falls on the floor, and it always falls peanut butter down. <laughs> I was thinking of it again the other night when we had uh, we got, went been to the doctor. I got home and I couldn't find my phone, so I went out to the van and called my phone. And where do you think the phone was? It was stuck right down in this, between the console and my seat. Could I get it? No way. And so we say, we live in a fallen world. <laughs> if it can go wrong, it will. Bad things happen. Bad things happen to good people. But life, we live, is in a fallen world. Life is full of hard things, isn't it? Life is full of hard things. Even when we have a little baby like Anna, I mean, it, when she came into this world, it was a hard thing for Autumn. <laughs> Labor is tough, I guess. That's what they say. It's what they whine about. I don't know if it's true or not, you know. <laughs> No, I, I know it to be true because I had bruises on my hand, you know, when I was holding Pam's hand uh, when she was uh, having contractions for Maranatha. She about, you know, I tell this story, and it's the absolute truth. When Maranatha was born, she was born on, in the old part of Ball Memorial Hospital on the second floor. And now that is the psych ward. <laughs> I blame Pam. <laughs> I hope she doesn't watch this video. <laughs> Life is full of hard things. And this, this year has been especially hard. It started pretty early in the year. Can't remember exactly when, when we started hearing about this COVID stuff, but somewhere around late February, mid to late February and early March. I know we had to shut the church down in March. And so we heard about this thing called COVID-19. Little did we know how much this would impact us on so many levels. I mean, our jobs, our economy, 
our 401ks. All kinds of things. People got sick. Very sick. Some died. Some we know have died. Businesses shut down. Maybe permanently in many cases. Churches shut down. Maybe a few of them permanently in some cases. In fact, we have yet to fully comprehend all the ramifications of COVID-19. We haven't seen the end of it yet. We're hopeful because of the vaccine. We're hopeful because of, you know, <laughs> once everybody gets it, we'll all be safe for a while at least, right? <laughs> it's been a hard year because of COVID-19. But that's not all that's happened this year. We've also had a nation in turmoil. Our nation's been a mess. We had riots in the streets that nobody would stop. We had cities occupied by lawless people taking over whole sections of the city and nobody would stop them because all through this year we've been missing justice. God loves justice. And this year, we haven't seen enough of it. We've also gone through a divisive election. Really divisive. Splitting the nation right down the middle. It's pro-life versus pro-abortion. It's the biggie. It's unarguable. Trump was pro-life, Biden pro-abortion. Even partial birth abortions. And Kamala Harris, she'll kill them after they're born. She said so. Make a decision after they're born. Traditional values versus perversion. One candidate said they ought to let, make a law to let seven-year-olds decide which gender they want to be. That's perverted. We saw an election with many irregularities. And you know what? It's not still yet. Many loved ones have passed away this year. Some very recently. Think of Dennis losing his mother. Think of not long ago, Jim and Becky losing their father. Many mothers and fathers have passed. Aunts and uncles and cousins have passed. It's been a hard year. So it's easy, it's very easy to become worried and discouraged about where we're at and where we're going. That's probably more worrisome. When's this all going to end? Like I said, we have some hope, but it's pretty small right now. It's easy to become worried and discouraged. But Paul knew that. Paul knew what it was like. That's why I wrote this passage. You know, sometimes we venerate these guys like the Apostle Paul. You know, and he is, earth, he is worthy of honor. The scripture says, give honor to whom honor is due. And the Apostle Paul is worthy of honor. He did great things for Jesus Christ. And we, and we do venerate him for that. But he was a man just like us. I would say he put his pants on just like we are, but I don't think he did. Because he wore robes. <laughs> But he knew what it was like to live in a fallen world. And that's why he wrote what he wrote. He knew how weak and frail we are. 
He knew just how weak and frail we are. That's why this passage begins with a description of who we are. The description that he gives of us is we are earthen vessels. We are earthen vessels. To understand that, we have to understand the times and, and, and the, the pottery that they, they used. The earthen vessels were made out of clay of the earth. Now that should not surprise us really to say that we are earthen vessels made of the earth because that's what God said in Genesis 2.7. When he said, the Lord God formed man out of the dust of the ground and breathed in his nostrils the breath of life, and man became a living being. So it was an easy comparison for the Apostle Paul to say, hey, we're made out of dirt. <laughs> you know, when you get high and lifted up and proud of yourself, just think of that. You're just dirt. But he said, we're earthen vessels, we're made out of clay. You know, and the closest, I mean, Adam has made, made much pottery when he was uh, in school. You guys probably have a lot of it around your house. We have some at our house. And uh, it's, it's a lot better pottery than they had. I guarantee you. But the pottery, that, the, the thing about clay pots is they chip, they break very easily. And sometimes, oftentimes, even when they would form the, the clay pots, the earthen vessels, and they put them into fire, they wouldn't even make it out of the fire. They would crack. Hence the name crack pots, I guess. But anyway, they would crack. That's why, you know, sometimes when we talk about loving with sincere love, and uh, it mean, it's, means without wax. And what they would do, the, the, the shysters, of the day, what they would do is they would fire their pottery, and if they had a crack in it, they would put wax in it so that it would look good so they could sell it. The problem was you put it on the fire, the wax melts out, and then so does your chicken noodle soup. We're clay pots. We are fragile. We break easy. By implication, this means that we are frail. Indeed, we are fragile. It's easy for us to get discouraged. It's easy for us to, to, to fall apart. It's easy, it's easy for us when we're in the fire of COVID or, or divisive elections or a nation in turmoil or, or deaths in the people we love or sickness. It's easy for us to fall apart. We're just like a clay pot. However, the Apostle Paul understood what we're going through because he lived in a fallen world too. And so this passage tells us how to deal with the hard things of life, the hard times of life, because they come. If you, we all have experienced them to some degree, but they're, we're going to experience more because we live in a fallen world. And so Paul's going to tell us here in this passage how to deal with these things. How to cope with living in a fallen world. But the first place he starts is to tell us when life is hard, we feel overwhelmed. You might have noticed the emphasis on feel overwhelmed. It's not that we are overwhelmed, we feel overwhelmed. Because God will not overwhelm us. He will not give us more to handle than we can. When life is hard, we feel Overwhelmed, And so he uses several words here to express how we feel. And they are tough words. And we've been there. We've, we've felt these things. The first word, the first phrase, I guess, that he uses is 
We are hard pressed. We are hard pressed. This word means to crowd, to afflict, to suffer tribulation or trouble. It has the idea of being pressed in so that you can hardly breathe. You know, when you're in college, you do stupid things. Hopefully some of us stop but uh, after college. But one thing we used to love to do is catch one of our buddies asleep and then dog pile on him. You know, so you have you know, somebody asleep and you have about 10 guys running and jump on top of them. Well, I had that pleasure a few times of being dog piled. And eventually, you know, you get enough guys on, you say, I can't breathe. You know, like, yeah, let me up, let me up. That's the idea here. So much is on top of us that we can't hardly breathe. Apostle Paul said that he felt this in 2 Corinthians 1.8. He says, For we do not want you to be ignorant, brethren, of our trouble, which has come to us in Asia, that we were burdened beyond measure, above strength, so that we despaired even of life. And again in 2 Corinthians 7, 5, he said, For indeed, when he came to Macedonia, our bodies had no rest, but we were troubled on every side. Outside were conflicts, inside were fears. The Apostle Paul understood the pressure that comes upon us. When, things are, when life is hard and things are, are falling apart, it seems like, we feel so pressed that we can hardly breathe. And that's the first phrase he used. We're hard pressed. But then he says we're perplexed. We're perplexed. That's a good word. It means to have no way out. To be at a loss. You ever feel that way? <laughs> Believe me, I've felt that way many times in my life. What do I do, Lord? How am I going to get out of this mess? I'm at a loss. I'm perplexed. And then he says, we feel persecuted. We're for persecuted. Now the Apostle Paul was truly persecuted. Most of the time we just feel persecuted. The word literally means to be pursued, to persecute. As believers, I got to say, we feel like we're being pursued right now. The new administration says that they would like to make much of what the scripture says, hate speech. I remember long ago when the Supreme Court made, made it legal to have same-sex marriages. A pastor friend of mine said, so Joe, are you ready to go to jail? <laughs> I said, I don't want to, but I got to be faithful to God's word. And if I got to go to jail to be faithful to God's word, then so be it. We feel pursued, don't we? That what we stand for from the scripture, biblical, biblical traditions and biblical teachings are not accepted. They're hate speech. No, they aren't. They're love speech. Because there's nothing loving about letting people destroy themselves. But he feel, we feel persecuted. We feel struck down. We feel struck down. The word literally means to be thrown down. This, these four words pretty well summarize 2020. Hard pressed, perplexed, persecuted, struck down. 
So the question I ask you this morning is, are you encouraged yet? <laughs> are you encouraged yet? We feel hard pressed, we feel perplexed, we feel persecuted, we feel struck down. Are you encouraged yet? No, but just hang in there. Because the good news is coming. So we learned that when life is hard, we feel overwhelmed. The second thing we learned from this passage is when life is hard, we don't have to be defeated. When life is hard, we don't have to be defeated. It's interesting that Paul said, in spite of how he felt, in, fi- in spite of being hard pressed, perplexed, persecuted, struck down, he said that in spite of how he felt, he wasn't, first of all, crushed. He wasn't crushed. This word means exactly what it says it means. <laughs> And he says, I'm hard pressed. Everything's dog piling on me. But I'm not crushed. He said, I'm perplexed, but I'm not in despair. I'm not in despair. This word in despair means to be utterly at a loss. What an encouragement that is for the Apostle Paul to say he felt all these things we feel, but he wasn't at a loss. He wasn't at a loss for what was going on in his life. He was persecuted, he felt, but he was not forsaken. He was not forsaken. He remembered, and I don't know if he wrote it, because there's some... Can, can, not certain evidence on who wrote the book of Hebrews. It may have been the Apostle Paul. It may have been somebody else. But whatever, he remembered these words from Hebrews 13, 5. Let your conduct be without covetous. Be content with such things as you have. For he himself has said, I will never leave you or forsake you. No wonder the Apostle Paul could say, I'm persecuted, but I'm not forsaken because the Lord stood by him. The Lord stood by him every inch of the way. He was never alone. He was always in the hands of Jesus. And he said he was struck down, but he was not destroyed. He was not destroyed. You know, when we reflect on the hard year that it's been in 2020, the Apostle Paul says, He was hard-pressed, but not crushed. He was perplexed, but not in despair. He was persecuted, but not forsaken. He was struck down, but not destroyed. And if you think we had problems in 2020, and who knows what 2021 will bring, but remember what the Apostle Paul went through? Let me remind you. Long passage. 2 Corinthians chapter 11, verses 23 to 28. Are they ministers of Christ? I speak as a fool, I am more. In labors more abundant, in stripes above measures, in prisons more frequently, in deaths often. From the Jews five times I received 40 stripes minus one. Three times I was beaten with rods. Once I was stoned. Three times I was shipwrecked. A night and a day I was spent in the, in the deep. In journeys often, in perils of water, in perils of robbers, in perils of my own countrymen, in perils of the Gentiles, in perils in the city, in perils in the wilderness, in perils in the sea, in perils among false brethren, in weariness, in toil, in sleeplessness, often in hunger and thirst, in fastings, often in cold and nakedness, besides the other things which come upon me daily, my deep concern for the churches." Now that's a list. That's worse than 2020. That's for sure. And yet, in this passage we just read, in verse 17, 
he says, for our light affliction. Would you call that light affliction? I'd call that a pretty horrible uh, 2020 in Paul's life. In a passage I didn't put up here, but I maybe should have, but I love Acts 20, verse 24. In Acts 20, 24, the Apostle Paul reflects on his life, and he says, but none of these things move me. <laughs> Acts 20, 24, none of these things move me. The Apostle Paul went through hard times, but he was not overwhelmed, and he was not defeated. How did he have this attitude? He's going to tell us. Because when life is hard, we need to think right thoughts. And he tells us what these right thoughts are here in this passage. The first thing he says, think of our life and we want to manifest Jesus in our lives. Twice he says this. In verse 10 and verse 11, he says, Always carried about in our body the dying of the Lord Jesus, that the life of Jesus may be manifested in our body. For we who live are always delivered to death for Jesus' sake, that the life of Jesus may be manifest in our mortal flesh. The Apostle Paul says when hard times come, we need to think about how can we reflect Jesus Christ in these moments, in these times, these hard times. Because the truth is, Jesus is reflected in the way we handle trouble. Excuse me. Jesus is reflected by how we handle trouble. If we handle it well and we remain praising God and trusting God in the midst of it, people will say, wow, that Jesus must be worth knowing. However, if we collapse, collapse under it, people will say that Jesus must not be all that. There ought to be a difference in how believers handle trouble than how the world handles trouble. There ought to be a difference in how we approach things in our lives in every way because we want to manifest Jesus in our lives. How can we show how great Jesus is in the midst of our troubles? We want to manifest Jesus in our lives. But secondly, he says, we want to minister to others through our trouble. We want to minister to others through our troubles. In verse 15, he says, for all things are for your sakes, that grace having spread through many may cause thanksgiving to abound to the glory of God. We want to be able to minister to others through our trouble. I love the verse, uh, verses in 2 Corinthians chapter 1. We're doing a lot of 2 Corinthians stuff this today. 2 Corinthians 1, 3, and 4 says, Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of mercy, the God of all comfort, who comforts us in all our tribulation, that we may be able to comfort those who are, who are in any trouble with the comfort with which we ourselves are comforted by God. God brings trouble into our lives so we can help others going through trouble. I could give you so many illustrations of that, but I don't have time. Of bad things that have happened to good people that they've been able to work out tremendously for the glory of God. We want, when life is hard, we need to think, how can we manifest Jesus in our lives? How can we minister to others through our trouble? But the third thing we want to learn from thinking right is we know, and that's an, that's an important word, we know that the trouble on the outside cannot overcome God's work in us. Paul, all through this passage, talks about how these people 
can be useful in their trouble to develop their lives. He says here, though our our outward man is perishing, verse 16, even though our outward man is perishing, yet the inward man is being renewed every day. You might know where I went with that thought of being renewed. I went to Isaiah chapter 40 and verse 31. Those who wait on the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings like eagles. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not faint. And in 2 Corinthians chapter 12, verses 9 and 10, he said to me, my grace is sufficient for you, for my strength is made perfect in weakness. Therefore, most most gladly, I will boast in my infirmities that the power of Christ may rest upon me. Therefore, I take pleasure in infirmities and reproaches in needs, in persecutions, in distresses, for Christ's sake. For when I am weak, then I am strong. We know that the trouble we're experiencing on the outside cannot overcome what God is doing inside us. So when life is hard, we need to think, how can I manifest Jesus in my life? When life is hard, we need to think, how can we minister to others through the trouble we're going through? When life is hard, we need to know that the trouble on the outside cannot overcome what God is doing on the inside. And the fourth thing we learn from this, from how to think right, is we can see beyond the trouble. And one of the most encouraging things that he says here in verse 18, he says, for the things which are seen are temporary. The things that are seen are temporary. They're they're only going to last a short period of time. They will not last forever. But what we do know is that our troubles are working for glory. Our troubles are working for glory. First of all, he says, our troubles are working for the glory of God. In that verse we read earlier in verse 15, he says, having spread through many, may cause thanksgiving to abound to the glory of God. Of God, That is our goal, right? To bring bring glory to God. Isn't that what we're told in 1 Corinthians 6, verses 19 and 20? Do you not know that your body is the temple of the Holy Spirit who is in you, whom you have from God, and you are not your own? For your body to price, therefore glorify God in your body and in your spirit, which are God's. We know that when we're going through trouble, we have opportunity to glorify God, to bring glory to Him. But it doesn't stop there. Because not only does it bring glory to God, it brings eternal glory for us. Isn't that what it says in verse 17? For our light affliction, which is but for a moment, is working for us a far more exceeding and eternal weight of glory. God promises that the things we suffer here on earth will definitely and glory in heaven. First Peter 1 Peter 1.7 says that the genuineness of your faith be much precious, more precious than gold that perishes, though it's tested by fire, may be found to praise, honor, and glory at the revelation of Jesus Christ. And Romans 8 verse 18. For I consider that the sufferings of this present time are not worthy to be compared with the glory which will be revealed in us. We see beyond the trouble. Yeah, it's, it stinks when we're going through it. It's terrible. But we see beyond it. We see how can we manifest Jesus in our lives. How can we minister to others who are going through this trouble? We know that God's at work in us, renewing us day by day. And we want to bring glory to God and experience glory in heaven. Life stinks sometimes. We live in a fallen world. So yes, life can be very hard. Life can be very hard. But God is very good. We know that. 
Even when bad things are happening, God is very good. So, what are we supposed to do? Enjoy Him in the easy times. Enjoy Him in the easy times and trust Him in the hard times. Trust Him in the hard times. It's not easy to do. It's not easy to do because life's hard. It can be very hard. Enjoy Him in the good times. Trust Him in the hard times. But at all times, at all times, glorify Him. Glorify Him. The Apostle Paul He was hard-pressed, perplexed, persecuted, struck down. But he said in verse 16, none of these things move me. Therefore we do not lose heart. Therefore we do not lose heart. Satan would love God's people to lose heart, to move But God's word says, do not lose heart. Life is hard, but God is good. Trust him and enjoy him. Heavenly Father, we thank you so much for these encouraging words from the Apostle Paul. We pray, dear God, that you would help us Because we're weak, we're fragile, we're earthen vessels, we're clay pots. And we fall apart easy. Keep us together, Lord. Help us to trust you, to think right, and to glorify you at all times. Amen.